Indeed, and greetings upon you, my beloved and holy friend. Thank you so much for joining me again here today in this moment. This moment feels more and more so, for me at least, like it's the same moment. <laughs> Genuinely, like every single time I hit that go live button, this entire feeling like comes over me, this energy flows from it. It's an instant recognition about what's about to happen again. And I'm so happy to be happening again with you right now, friends. Thank you for joining me genuinely. As we get into it, I do want to say something worth saying. It's, uh, it's on the note of choosing love. When love is chosen, so that you want nothing else, you will see nothing else but a lovely world. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a good thing we're saying. Thank you, Mr. Auto Moderator, for saying hello to me as well. And thank you, friends, for sharing the space. When love is chosen so that you want nothing else, you will see nothing else but a lovely world. I celebrate in this manner the truth of who I am and I bring peace to the world in this day. It's Carmelia. Thank you, my friend, for being here with me. We have Katie as well, my friend. Thank you for being here. Like, <laughs> just before I actually went live, I saw I had a message and Katie was like, dude, are you done streaming? Because I, I did a stream of the Tibetan Book of the Dead today. Goodness. It's much. It's the things that are being discussed make sense, but I feel they there's a lot of jargon, a lot, like a lot of jargon, like a lot, a lot, so much jargon. It, it feels again like this mental gymnastics, like you're running through this obstacle course trying to read the words, and then not only are you running through the obstacle course, but you're also trying to get to the end point. But as you're trying to run through these obstacle courses, if you misbehave or if you don't get one of the obstacles right, you don't actually get to get to the end point. You don't understand what it is they're trying to, you know, articulate or say. And I can, I already notice how as I'm reading it, there is this propensity slash likelihood slash want for me to try and quantify it in a way that I can understand it myself or the way that I would articulate it instead of being overly jargon based and even though we use a lot of jargon here I mean you know you know, you know what I'm saying uh infamous one my friend thank you for the hugs I really do appreciate it <sighs> taking breaths with you as well Katie if I was up earlier I would have tuned in it is a little bit early that is the one thing that I am mildly bummed out by I remember talking to Javan asking when she would be available as well, you know, to actually tune in. And she was like, oh, you know, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. your time. And like 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. is usually the time I spend meditating. So I spent reading up until 2 p.m. and then I finished up. The only alternative is that I do it, you know, somewhere in the nighttime hours. And it's not going to be difficult to do it in nighttime hours. I just imagine myself being even more wrecked. Like I had a hard time understanding and reading <laughs> it in the state I was in. Never mind being in a tired state, how I'm going to, to function in reading that, but it is good. It is good. The stuff that has been covered at least, you know, so far is again it okay. So it almost starts, you know, from this place of riffing on Western ways of seeing the world and Freudian ideas as well and it just kind of goes deeper and deeper into how western ways of seeing the world is completely lodged in duality you know it wants to have that separateness if you will where eastern philosophy has a a way of dealing with paradoxes a little bit more efficiently and one of these paradoxes that they keep bringing up over and over again, and we bring those paradoxes up here as well, is the paradox of being both 
absolutely nothing, you know, in the scale of the universe, in the scale of what consciousness could be. And also being everything in what consciousness could be. Recognizing that you are that which knows nothing and then recognize within that nothingness, within that not knowing, there is everything. And you, my friend, yes. Yeah, you're like me? Yes, you. You are that everything, friend. Take control of it. <sighs> Believe it for yourself. Make it a part of your life in a way that you can serve others in that way as well. Because one of the things that I also go into in, in like talking about that is it can be so beneficial to your life if you've accepted this way of thinking. But if you accept it again in a Western way where you associate yourself with this godness, you know, and just yourself with this godness, then it can create this, what they call very eloquently, theological inflation. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's the one, that's a cool word. So it's not about getting so obsessed with, with the, the godhood that is, you know, permeating your entire life in a way that you associate yourself with it, but in a way that you associate all of life with it, all of the people you spend time with, recognizing them as a part of that, which you're a part of, and giving yourself power in doing that. What is day 258? Today is, <laughs> today is day 258 of me showing up every single day, my friend. We do this every single day with the intention of the message that love is true. And every single time that I do this, every single day that we show up, we find that love is true. Thank you, friends, for sharing the space with me. If you want to see more of us, if you believe love is true, and you know, I don't do this a lot, but I'm going to game it a little bit. If you believe love is true, you can sprinkle a little bit of an updoot on the, the stream, if you'd be willing to, my friend. Completely up to you. Mm, I have a dilemma at the moment. Do share with us, <laughs> Scarmelia. Do share with us. We would like to help you if we can. Coming in hot to some lovers. I miss the reading, but I'm going to look after we end here. Thank you so much, Infamous One. You don't need to, of course, my friend, but I appreciate you sharing the space with us. Mm, so what's good for you, E? Do I mean, <sighs> what is good for me? What is good for you? My title for today is Can We Be Late? for fate. Day 258, can we be late for fate? I rate. <laughs> no, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> Some of the, the things that came to my mind was like, oh, hell no. So like this question of being late for fate, if things are fated, if there is this fated nature to this reality, can you not show up for that fate? Again, the book was going into archetypes as well, interestingly enough. Not something that I wasn't like expecting at all from a book like that. But archetypes in mind. And how we could potentially find ourselves doing the same things over and over again. In the same way we have a pattern with our bodies, you know. We have, you know, these fingers attached to our arms and these arms attached to our torsos. And our torsos have these legs and heads attached to them. We all have that pattern. But it's possible that we have patterns on a mental scale as well. We have patterns that could be perpetuating throughout our humanity, throughout all of consciousness in this way. And I was really fascinated by thinking about that, actually. I was like, hmm, hmm. And then, you know, thinking about that, what, what if, in this mental way, what if you don't show up for these archetypes? What if you can, in a way, recognize a potential archetype, a potential mental loop that you've been in for a trillion years? You can actually recognize it and try and escape it. Or is there any escape from it whatsoever? Can you be late for fate? I don't know. I don't think so. Like, okay, so one of the craziest things about determinalism, right, is the fact that it is both undetermined and determined. And the, the reason I'm saying that is in the way that we're living our lives right now, right? I can go randomly, oh, coherent speech, and then, oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> you know? Like, there's nothing coherent about that. And yet it is something that we can induce with inside of ourselves. <sighs> oh, goodness. Yeah. Being a human being is, is weird. Yeah. <laughs> very, very weird. 
What book are you reading? We're reading the Tibetan Book of the Dead, my friend. Vincent, it's nice to have you here again. Scarmelia says, I really don't want to wake Sean up because, because, he, <laughs> because he always wakes up in a bad mood and we end up fighting. But Serena has a doctor appointment and I'm considering rescheduling just to avoid waking him up. Um... <sighs> Carmelia, I hear you're thinking of this as a dilemma, and the the harsh, the the like f the masculine inside of me is like it's not really a dilemma. You know, the one case, it's your child's health, who you have made an appointment with a professional to have your child's health taken care of, and on the other hand, you have a person literally sleeping. <laughs> to me, it's not a dilemma. It's just you, you do it, Carmelia, do it, and if Sean. You know, wants to wake up in a bad mood. You just give the phone to him right now. I'll talk to Sean. Freaking Sean. Look at me, Sean. Freaking, what's her name? Serena has a doctor appointment. Wake up. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it, wake up, Sean. <laughs> I've been really needing to start waking up earlier. Anyhow, now there's a little extra motivation. Ask Javan. That would be amazing if you would want to do that. You really do not need to, though. Imagine you waking up like 6 a.m. Literally just rubbing the <laughs> sleep out of your eyes. And I'm just like, ah, a little bit of crazy reading books. I, I mean, it could be a vibe. Kira woke up this morning this way, actually. I'm here. Nailed it. I'm, I hope you think so, hair. I love your shirt. Thank you. I appreciate you as well, friend. I love you, bro. There we go. I love you as well. Thank you. What book are you reading? I've shared with you. Mm, no, no. Fate is always. <laughs> Thank you for the wholesome. Does anyone know what book he's reading? I've shared with you, puzzle-headed. Fortunately, you won't be puzzle-headed much longer. I keep forgetting to mention there is a big festival going on in here from the last Friday of one of the major god lord Gneshna is nine days long and nights are getting shorter with all of the events. Mm, okay, Vincent. I mean, it sucks mild ass <laughs> that you're sick you know during these celebrations but i hope it gets better my friend i hope you get better i hope the festivities don't end before you're better and if they do i hope that you could you know spend some some time in a way that is in solitude while there is festivities going on having the experience of feeling like you're missing out on something because that can be a very pungent and powerful feeling as well you're speaking my language brother English is pretty popular. <laughs> I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm just joking with you. Thank you, Hair. This is a loving place, my friend. You are appreciated. Yo, Milt Squad, send me your energy today. I need it to keep up with this apartment hunt. Okay. If you friends have, you know, some energy to spare in the tank, close your eyes. You can visualize something for Dan. Dan wants help searching for apartments. So we can imagine, you know, apartments. Hmm. I'm just imagining apartments that, that sparkle for some reason. There's no, there's no specific description to the apartments I'm imagining, but all of them are sparkling for you. I hope you get a good one, Dan. Oh, we have Yader here as well. We missed you yesterday, my friend. Welcome to the family, my friend. Indeed, Tibetan Book of the Dead, I think. You are 100% right. And thank you for spelling it correctly as well, Katie. It's of an A at the end of the last uh, noun. Vowel? <laughs> That's the one. Karma implies nothing could be any other way. Oh, oh, damn it. That's the point I was trying to get into. Thank you, hair. I'm eternally grateful to you. So, that, that whole determinalism slash non-determinalism, within infinity, within the set of infinity, right? And the thing about infinity as well is there are smaller sets of infinity than other infinities. There are sets of infinity contained within larger sets of infinity. And we can think of our current finite lives, our infinite universe, as contained as a set within a larger infinity. And within that larger infinity, all other potential infinities are contained as well. So potential infinite universes, exactly the, like the one we're experiencing now, could be represented within this. And within those infinite potential represented universes, there is a scenario in which I drank from this side of the cup 
and drank from this side of the cup. And there's a scenario, which is this universe, where I drank from both sides of the cup. And it just, it keeps fractaling out into every single conceivable potential outcome of every single thing with inside of that infinity. So if you, like, if you could have the ability to have this perspective of being able to witness all of these sets of infinities at the exact same time, you would realize that everything is perfectly determined. But being caught within one of those infinities, maybe they're not. <laughs> it's too much. I'm sorry. I'll stop. I'll stop. Um, and the thing with karma for me as well is karma, as you're saying, it's uh, they're saying it's predetermined. Like karma is this thing that, and they explain it in the book as well. It's always like sticky. It sticks to you on a on a, almost like a soul level. Like no matter where you go, what body you find yourself in, what universe you're still going to have this karmic baggage attached to you. And I, I think of that as a way that, you know, you're victimizing yourself. I don't want to believe that at all. The comments aren't working. I have to keep refreshing. I think it might also have been because we had a lot of people in chat at the same time. Katie, it should be a little bit better now, my friend. Same. And my awards didn't show up at first. They're showing now, fortunately. If you're if you, if you procrastinate, then will fate then fate will have to wait. Ooh, ooh, Charles, thank you for being here with us, my friend. We miss you as well. If you procrastinate, then fate will wait. Hmm. That is quite great as a gate to the right mind state. I'm spending way too much brain power on this. I should continue. Or your fate will just be that. Again, again, Katie, then is it fate? You know, because if, if it's your fate to procrastinate and you stop, are you changing fate? Is that, is that fated for you to have changed fate? Is there a way to be late for it even in that way? So you're going to change fate. You're going to stop procrastinate, but you're procrastinating your stopping of procrastination. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's too much. Like how, how are you supposed to pull that into an understanding? We're having a federal election here. The bush is flying around. The air is disgusting. You can always tell a politician. You can always tell a politician, but you can't tell them much. Politics. Oh, politics. Oh, goodness. Like, I, I think politics... You should be some of the most hardy of consciousnesses on this entire plane of existence. I, I believe that's what they should require of people going into politics, rather. Like, if you want to go into politics, you should have, like, at least 10 mushroom trips varying from 1 to 5 grams, you know, under the belt. Have smoked at least UFD, you know, understand, you know, stuff completely beyond yourself. Understand some proper... <laughs> social cues, you know, understand what humans need. Like there has to be this whole boot camp of things you have to kind of pass before you should be allowed to become a politician. Unfortunately, you know, politics as we know it right now doesn't have any consequences. Or, maybe not consequences is the right word, but... accountability that's the word i'm looking for like where in no other field can you just you know blatantly say things are gonna be this way and that way and then as soon as you get into power i mean unless you're talking about dictatorships and stuff like that obviously but that, it just oh it triggers me 
How do we continue to allow this? How long are we going to continue to allow this? Someone trimmed up nicely today. My hat to you, good sir. Good day to you, Candace. We actually trimmed yesterday, but I'm happy you're noticing today, my friend. It probably helps that the hair is up as well. It's Wednesday, my dudes. Yes, it is. We're on our pad. Happy Wednesday to you as well, my dude. Thank you for joining us, Edmund. You hyped uh, up on coffee, lol. A little bit. I, I took some niacin, which is vitamin B3. And I had some coffee. And I had a small piece of an edible, which also helped. Yeah. I think it's a niacin, really. Uh, and it's, it's kind of heating me up as well. So niacin has this reaction that is... I don't know exactly the terminology for it. But one way for me to describe it is it expands your capillaries. So the smallest of the little, you know, <laughs> the smallest of the blood veins, you know, the very end of the blood veins, they're there where they kind of reach into the cells and give them their nutrients. Those things kind of expand. And it does that all over your body. And what it can do is you can go into flushing where... Because of that expansion of capillaries, you can have, like, especially on your face, where it expands so much that you can literally see the blood underneath your skin. And then it makes your skin look extremely red, and then you have this flushing symptom. But it also, you know, allows your body to oxygenate itself much more efficiently. All of your nutrients get delivered much more efficiently. So, yeah, hip, hip to nice, and it can help for hair growth as well, apparently. And I took a, a 500 milligram capsule of it. Technically, our daily recommended dosage is 20. <laughs> it's how they sell them, okay? It's not my fault. Uh, good morning, beautiful. Good morning to you, Candace. It's so nice to have you here, my friend. Good morning, Mel. Hey, Mariah. It's nice to have you, my friends. Carmela says, we don't live together anymore. I'd have to just call him repeatedly. And oh, he wakes up and there's no guarantee. He will wake up. Okay, that's true. There is no guarantee that he will wake up. But if you don't call him, you guarantee that he won't wake up. So you either have no guarantee that he will wake up or you have a guarantee that he won't wake up, you know? And you still have to choose, Carmelia. You're the one in the seat of creation. Just steer it in the direction you believe is necessary. <laughs> You're going to be the one that's best. Uh, how did you start this journey? What made you choose? What did make me choose? Hmm. Contemplation. I was sitting. I was sitting and thinking, yes. Right there, actually. I was smoking a joint as well. I don't know if that's relevant. But I was sitting and thinking and looking out into the farm. And I, I remember this sheer sense of... It was basically at the last day of, this, of, of 2020. Like the last, last day. And I came back from China in August... And I spent some time at home, you know, just actually decompressing from all of the BS that happened there. And I was looking over the farm and I was like contemplating this question. Okay, now what? You know, what's next? What? <laughs> you know, we have this momentum. We have to keep going. Can't do nothing. What, what is next? And then like out of nowhere, this idea popped into, inside of my head. Like I'll actually show you what this idea looked like inside of my head. Uh, because it's this thing. This thing right here. And this thing holds you friends, and then this thing takes footage for the YouTube video that I upload afterwards. And I was like, I had this idea in my head, and the, the first thing that I did is I stood up, and I went to my brother, and I was like, this is, this is a thing that I want. <laughs> I want you to make me this, because he has a, a 3D printer. So I draw him the idea, I sketch out what I want, and... What? 12 hours later, I had this physical part in my hands. And then we started this journey. We started this journey. It became so much more than I could have ever anticipated. It has been so blessed. Sometimes you just have to choose, my friend. Sometimes, you know, finding that thing that you've been wondering about, or not even finding the thing you've been wondering about, confiding in the thing you've been wondering about, can be so difficult, can be so intimidating. But if you don't do it, again, going back to the analogy of the guarantees slash no guarantees. If I don't do this, 
or if I do this, there's no guarantee for me to expect any success. And that's how I went into this with as well. But if I don't do it, I guarantee myself no success. So it was a choice. It was a choice I had to make, my friend. Thank you for asking that question as well. Love you, Katie. We love you, friend. I'm just going to reschedule because I, do, I really don't want to fight. Because the first thing he does is threaten to not take us where we want to go. Also, hi, Viking. You don't live with him anymore. And... He's going to threaten you that he won't take you where you need to go. Like you have to give me more context, Carmelia. Sending a... Ooh, seeing a brand new apartment for you. Very comfy. Thank you for visualizing the same, Katie. I appreciate that. And any other beautiful souls in here. You're, you're the beautiful soul in here as well, Edmund. We see you, my friend. Thank you for being here with us. Mm, I'm getting better at remembering names. Slowly but surely, it does help. You know, I feel I haven't been learning too many new names. I think we've been accepting just usernames. Like, I kind of somewhat remember every single one of the usernames of the friends. Especially the regulars, but like real names, main names, have been harder. How did you say? Oh, by the way, I stumbled upon your page and I absolutely love you. Puzzle-headed P, thank you, my beloved friend. I really appreciate your loving words. I've shared with you what made me start. You like it? Here's more YouTubes and Discords. Thank you, Jovan. You're so blessed, my friend. I like your cut, G. Thank you, friend. I appreciate it. Karma sticks much like swag. Freaking, it's instant defeat. Dan, just like, uh, stabs. Stabs in the heart. Karma sticks like swagger. Which will stick to you if applied correctly. If applied correctly. That has... Oh, that, that concerns me even more. What does that mean? What does that mean? Like, I'm imagining you slap the swagger packet twice. Open it and apply it and then it sticks to you. But if you don't slap said swagger packet twice, it doesn't stick to you. And then people accidentally slapping their swagger packets. And then gluing their mouths shut. <laughs> it's horrible. No, why am I thinking about that? So to you friends who are like, what the fuck are these dudes talking about? Swaggered and Lobama is one of the inside jokes that Dan Poopsy 808 has been sharing with us. He gets me every single time. Like he starts with saying something that I think, oh, he's gonna he's gonna bring some valuable input, and then it it's like a rediversion to Swaggered or Globama, and it's a it's a lol every time. Mm, and yeah, Lord Ganeshna. Ganeshna is the one with the head of the elephant. Oh. Oh. I don't know why I didn't know that, but thank you for sharing. In festival, the sculpture of him are brought in by different communities and even families and are worshipped for nine days. Millions of, scu of sculpture, sculpture are being prepared for that purpose. And some are even 60 feet high. Do you burn them? I'm curious about that because I know some cultures burn their sculptures, you know, as a as a way to kind of give honor to the impermanence of things as well. And the fact that they're making millions, as you're saying, of these sculptures, and they're doing it every single year for nine days, isn't there like an, uh, an abundance of these sculptures already? It would make sense that there won't be if they're burning them. But please stop. <laughs> please, please stop burning things. Please stop making things and burning them again. <laughs> Oh goodness, we have some useless converter bot facts. So I, the thing about these useless converter bots, and this is the, the worst part about it, is the fact that not only does it give you useless information, the useless information it gives you is not accurate. So let's hear what it gives us. 60 feet is the length of approximately 80 wooden rice paddle versatile serving spoons laid lengthwise. That's a lie. If you do that, if you actually do that, it won't be, you know, that exact uh, measurement properly. Freaking useless converter bot bamboozling us. Uh, I'm kind of glad people uh, streamed out Lamau. Like, fortunately, the streams are usually kind of contained. <laughs> Thanks, converter bot! <laughs> Sometimes the light is too bright. And that's why you squint. That is true. That is actually why, part of the reason. I mean... 
I can keep my eyes open if I need to. But I don't think any of us are going to be comfortable looking at that. <laughs> I've been doing an experiment. Waking up early with an alarm makes me feel awful. But without it, I still wake up around the same time. But I feel much better. I wake up less alarmed. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, quite literally, you do wake up less alarmed. Interestingly enough, alarms, and I, and I know this is not, you know, that interesting. We all probably have it. Like, the way that our brains have the ability to incorporate our dream, or, yeah, incorporate our dream and our alarm sounds, you know, into one. Where instead of just, you know, waking up from your alarm going off, your, your brain is just like, oh, wait. Now we're vibing to dream with music. This is the way it is. And your brain is just like, oh, wait, okay, guess, guess there's music in the dream, you know? Like, interestingly enough, your brain turns off the logical part of yourself when you're in a dream state. You don't have the ability to reason as efficiently. That's why things can be completely absurd. You know, you can just suddenly fly, and it's like, oh, wait, I'm flying. You're not like, wait a second. Wait a second, gravity? Gravity, are you still there? Nope, you're just away. I'm now flying. How interesting is that? If we did not have the ability to reason in this plane of existence, we would probably live very happy and free lives, but we would also, in the same sense, not be very valuable members of society. <sighs> Freaking live in a society, friends. <laughs> Sir, thank you for the hugs, my friend. How are you today? Thankfully, there is an epigenetics and plasticity. Been thinking lately about how being triggered is really nothing to avoid, since opening old wounds is often necessary in order to clean it out. Stuff gets trapped and we cycle based on that. Very good point. You can think of it in a way it's not exactly the best way to think of it, but you can think of it in a way as an abscess or as a as a wound that festers. Like sometimes we, we imagine that we are okay with something, that we have dealt with something efficiently. But if you find yourself claiming that you've both dealt with something whilst also avoiding it like the plague, you know, not wanting to talk about it, not wanting to see any of it, not wanting to... Be open to like, ah, oh, oh, it hurts. Uh, if you can't do that, then you're not over it just yet. You still have to go back and feel some more into it. Very good point, hair. Hair, hair irony? Irony. I'll call you irony. It's better. Mm, that's fairly well today, K. Doing fairly well today, KT. How are you doing? I'm okay. Just trying to stay afloat. We're here with you, my friend. Throwing you your little... Rings, if you will. I ain't late for fate. I am fate. Mm. Again, again, in this, in this analogy, in this infinitude, technically, yes, you are both fated and fate. It, to be infinitely. Just imagine for a second that there are infinite versions of yourself. So if you were to try and attach some value to this person, this ego, or what we feel or think of it, you can extrapolate infinite value again. Oh, a smaller set of infinite value, but still infinite value from imagining all of the infinite possible lives you could have lived. And as a result of that, the infinite amount of experience you will extrapolate from that experience. My little brother is like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, infinity. Human beings and our absolute fascination with infinity. What is that all about? No, uh, that is a wonderful way to put that beautifully said, friend. It really is. People don't go into politics anymore to change things. They go in to get rich and rile people up. That is unfortunately the case. You see, and I know for a fact, if someone has gone through some of the proposed therapy, like I would probably have to sit down and spend a few hours, you know, actually preparing something if I'm going to do something like that genuinely. But you would not be able to after something like that. Like it would not be in your scope of capacity to try and rip people or rile people 
or to try and get rich off of people's suffering. It would physically and psychologically and physio <laughs> physiologically, I don't know, it's probably the wrong word, not be capable, you won't be capable of doing that. It would be something that is so against your alignment that you won't be able to. And the fact that we are allowing people that don't have that alignment to rule over us, you know, to make decisions that affect millions, it baffles my mind. I'm like, what? Oh, that's just, what do I? True, if we never confront it, then the wound just gets bigger and eventually impossible to avoid. Oh, yep. And like an infection can lead to death. Oh, looks clean. <laughs> my God, fresh, fresh. <laughs> Thank you, friends. I'm happy you're noticing it today. Like, I, I actually shaved yesterday. But yesterday, there was like a lot of like chaos as well, I feel. Some chaos, at least. Thank you, friends. I genuinely appreciate it. Uh, is destiny... Is destiny the slice of butter? <laughs> fate and destiny. So, his name is Toasty. So, just imagining destiny melting onto fate. Can destiny melt onto fate? Is destiny and fate mutually exclusive? Or is it the exact same thing? I think it might be the exact same thing. So maybe maybe it can melt into fate. Allow us to be your wrath, my friend. Thank you for saying the same. Uh, I used to take niacin to try and uh, pass piss tests. Uh, I would look <laughs> red as a fuck. I didn't know it helped with that. That's really interesting, Dan. Thank you for letting me know. Dilated blood vessels, yes, that's the one, my friend. Yep, 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 that's exactly. I like that, but I do also think we should be slow to react. I think moments ring on long after they're over, so it takes time for our emotions that we attach to those moments to mature. Mm. Perfectly put, Jovan. It's like a rock in the river, directs the flow, sometimes too many rocks obstruct the flow. The rocks are like what we call energy blocks, it seems to me. And you know what the, the craziest part about it is as well? Is the fact that in this analogy, in this imagination of it, people are so scared of, you know, the absolute flow of water that is going to come, you know, from the alleviation of this blockage, that they are unwilling to try and attempt any correction of that blockage but what we can do on a, a psychic level on a level of interpretation to our lives and the way we lead it we can pick some of these little rocks up you know slowly but surely at first with our moving of these obstacles that we sometimes create for ourselves in our lives we start to have the trickle and then the trickle turns into a stream and the stream turns into a proper flow and then eventually that river flows through us again <sighs> Don't let yourself stay blocked, my friends. Mm, power trip. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Power tripping. It's a big part of our world as well, unfortunately. Do you? But you're a goldfish, Katie. A goldfish. We believe in you. What must you get? What made you get into this lifestyle? What changed your mindset? Um. So it went from growing up in a house where... I had a, an interesting perception of what was. Like, grew up in a very Christian household, saw some things, saw a lot of things that weren't indicative of the message I was being taught, if you will. And then, oh, you know, getting into my teens, not only did I decide to make a decision for myself, start to actually think for myself, but I also completely went opposite to what I was being taught. So because I was taught to be a Christian and expected to believe things in the way that they are and the way that I was being taught, I was like, nope, actually, instead of being a Christian, I'm going to go hardcore atheism. And I believe that there is nothing, you know, after death, there is just nothingness in the same way that there wasn't anything before you were born there is nothing after you die we're nothing more than a biological machine processing you know little electrons flowing through our neurons these little neurons is a function of our 
produced consciousness or our consciousness is produced as a function of these little electron neurons. So when those electron, electron <laughs> patterns between those neurons cease to be, I cease to be. And on an egoic level, that is still true. This body will cease to be. But now I've accepted that there is this underlying truth, this underlying force, this underlying consciousness awareness of, and that's what I identify with. And that permeates everything. No matter how much I've experienced, no matter how much I've seen, no matter how much you've experienced, how much you have seen, we can all agree that underneath all of it, there is the awareness that there is it. And that awareness is what we are. And that awareness is always. And I had to take a few steps to get to that realization. Hardcore atheism led to me being extremely depressed. Extreme depression led to suicide attempts. Those suicide attempts led me to researching more about other means of uh, taking care of my mental health. Uh, re reading up on stuff like that kind of introduced me to weed. Smoking weed allowed me to sleep properly, allowed me to take my personal health when it comes to my fitness into consideration. It, it changed a lot of things about my personality as I was just allowing myself this, you know, plant chemical. And then because of this plant chemical, you could call it the gateway if you want to. Uh, I was also more prone to, to think about something else as well. Did more research and then found psychedelics as a result of the stuff I was looking up. <gasps> hello, hello, hello! Hello, yay! Hello, yay! Hello, 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 Oh, yeah, so first it led me to psychedelic mushrooms, which I did a lot of research on. I found out, you know, what it looks like, the chemical representation of it, how similar it is to our own chemicals, and then self-experimentation, meditation, whew, and a lot of, you know, contemplative, personal, inner looking has helped me get to this mindset, if you will. It's not like, a, oh, you know, this one thing and then mindset changed. No. So a bunch of steps, puzzle headed. I'm happy to be taking these steps with you friends now as well. Kiki is playing, you know, with her rope. She wants me to start throwing it for her. Let me show you what this looks like. I'm sorry, YouTube friends, for not including you. Look at this. You having fun? I love her so much. She is a divine little being. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Exactly. Politics is no longer a career of helping your people. Just another business to get into to exploit those below you. Hot melted destiny. <laughs> Thankfully, goldfish forget easily. <laughs> or do they? I don't think this goldfish forgets easily, at least nice and overload. Not completely overloaded, maybe loaded, if anything. <laughs> uh, wow, look at your hair, you handsome motherfucker. Damn it, hard. I tip the hat to you as well, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Melting over a giant a file of flapjacks. Mm, what made you get... I've already answered that question, puzzle-headed. Kiki, relax. She's like now throwing my slippers around and stuff. She does this thing where she lays on her side, bites onto something, and then rolls over to her other side, letting go of the thing that she was biting onto, flipping it into me. <laughs> oh, she's so freaking cute. I love her. I love her so much. They are the most. They are the most woke animals. Um, Whoa, 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 whoa. They are the most woke animals then because they are forced to live in 
the now happening they don't remember bad or good happenings i get what you're saying i feel like i had a hard time reading it a little bit candace is telling the story of how we were created oh goodness by the way i happened to mention breaking bad yesterday it reminds me have you watched the prequel better call Saul? i started watching it i didn't finish watching it unfortunately <sighs> why did i stop i think it was more a uh, you know time thing i was just like do not have time right now and then i just stopped watching it and i haven't started watching it again a man in haram pants had an idea we came from a universal 3d printer <sighs> no it's too much for my mind to handle right now candace I haven't actually set an intention with this cup of water. Hmm. What do we want to set it as? We've been talking a lot about life. Me. I'm taking sips of life. In the beginning, there was love and light. Absolutely. In the beginning, there was love. And from that love, light emitted. It's another way to think of it as well. I'm grateful to be here, to hear the story of your manifesting this family. Grateful to have you here as well. Yater, being part of the family, to hear it as well. And is this how I got here? Yes. Well, now you know. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you just reschedule appointments when he isn't in the middle of everything? Thank you for your well wishes, Katie. Love to you, Dan. You got this, my friend. Someone get on that screenshot. What are you screenshotting? I'm not sure. The appointment was scheduled months months in advance and i forgot about it until today goodness so did you also forget to tell him in advance about this i'm guessing you know so the reason he's sleeping is because he didn't actually know there was a doctor appointment to be had it's so hot and these haram pants are actually like kicking my ass like hardcore kicking my ass we're going to be uh, sitting a little bit to the side yeah, I feel like we haven't been learning real names like we used to, or just use usernames though. Now, I don't think it's because we're less interested. I just think it's because we're being more realistic, Edmund. All right, I think that's what it is. Uh, it was a happy accident to stumble upon you. Just what I needed this morning. You're easy on the eyes too. Thank you, friend. That's very nice of you to say. It helps, if anything. Yes, I have officially jinxed you. You came here for someone pretty, and then you <laughs> got ideology. <laughs> uh, hippie babble, if you will, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bamboozled you. Thank you for the hugs, Toasty. I appreciate you, my friend. It's like when I see, when a seed falls from a tree and lands perfectly where it needs to grow. That's beautiful as well. Makes sense. And yeah, my friend, again... Hair, thank you. Genuinely, thank you for sharing this space with us as well. You're a genuine, beloved co-creator now. Makes sense. You know what the best action is, my friend. Yup, yup, yup. Ganesha. Ganesha. Bro, you got your Ganesh. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I've got my Ganesh. A Ganesh of my own. Unfortunately not. If they burn these Ganesh statues, I want one instead of them burning one. Uh, I know the flowers from these events are collected and turned into incense sticks. Okay, that's amazing. Value? Life is already valuable enough. Depressed dude, you are perfectly correct, my friend. Life is infinitely valuable. Everything is infinitely valuable. You know, and that's the, that's the trip about it. Because, again, and we're going to come back to it, maybe that's going to be the intention or the, the name for today's stream on the YouTube is talking about infinities because there are sets of infinity larger than other sets of infinity it's still infinity there's still an infinite amount to experience an infinite amount to learn an infinite amount to feel but some sets of infinity are more full than other sets of infinity and it's the same for life it's the same for the choices we make it's the same for how we choose to do things if you're going to live in a place of judgment in your whole your whole life, a change of a, a place of fear, then you're going to still experience 
infinite life, infinite potential, infinite consciousness, living in that way, living in judgment, living in fear. But the set of fear, the set of judgment, infinite as it may be, is a smaller set of infinite than love would be. Where I believe love would be the set of infinity that contains everything. So it's, it's this, to me at least, this very visual representation of what I want to align with, where I want to find myself with. You know, like if these fears, the thing about space, you know, and the void of space as well, you could technically just keep adding bigger and bigger spheres in the space. And there's just no cap to it because it's infinity. But even though as you go infinitely up, those things are going to be infinitely and more infinitely bigger, it is still going to be infinitely small within the set of infinite that it's caught in. <laughs> <laughs> right it's it's way too much for us to comprehend as human beings but we can simplify it down and create value from it in a way that we can live our lives into one alignment or another depressed dude thank you for co-creating with us my friend usually when things get too absurd in my dreams i realize it's too cool and i become aware of the dream and it falls apart and i wake up Luckily, that happens with nightmares too, which are much more common. You get nightmares a lot. I haven't had nightmares since I was, I think, maybe like nine years or eight years old. And this is not like a place of superiority or something. I just think I maybe either I'm forgetting the nightmares I have these days or I'm no longer perceiving them as nightmares. I have horrible dreams, you know. I don't call them nightmares. I just call them horrible dreams. Like, oh, that was very much not a vibe. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to be like, oh, that was a nightmare. Maybe it is. Maybe it's just my perception of it, the way that I choose to articulate about it. I hope they get better. I'm happy that you at least can escape from them. You're not stuck within them. It's the bummer on the other side of losing the good dreams as well. But I mean, you're saying the one is more common than the other. So I guess it, it balances out. I went through a phase of suddenly waking up one minute before the alarm and of those were good days. I went through that phase as well, interestingly enough, Jovan. They really are. Because it's almost like this anticipation. Like you feel yourself emerging into this consciousness again. And then you feel yourself also directing your attention towards your your phone or your alarm being like, okay, you're going to do it. You're going to do the thing. I know you're going to do the thing. I'm already ready for it. You're not going to alarm me. <laughs> I know it's coming. This happens with my kids. I am asleep and my kids end up in the weird stages of my dream. Like, what the fuck are you doing in here? How did you get in this car with me? I'm in the middle of the end of the world and you're asking me for Syria. Maybe it's something to anchor you, Candace. Like you were actually going to drive off of the end of the world and then suddenly a little being appears next to you. Mom, I want cereal. And then you're like, stop the car, driving, trying to drive off of the end of the world. Turns it around. <laughs> goes back to the, the supermarket to get milk and cereal because one of the girls wants their cereal. You should watch a, cha a YouTube channel called The School of Life, The Philosopher's Playlist. I do know The School of Life, but I didn't know about The Philosopher's Playlist. Thank you for recommending it, little beer. And thank you for being here. I wish I could do that. You can train yourself too, Katie. Interestingly enough, you can actually train yourself too. Writing down helps with stuff like that. You are one of the sneaky ones. Put my name and my other name. Checks both boxes. <laughs> yeah. Both of you are sneaky ones in that way, actually. Uh, not when you dream of work and wake up suddenly to the alarm telling me it's time to get ready for work. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's straight up not a vibe. You just have a dream of you, you know, just suffering a work day. Like, oh... When will this work day end? Uh bad, it sucks. Da, 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 da. And then you find yourself at the end of your work day walking to your car. And then you look up in the sky and then you suddenly start to fly. And you're like, wait a second, I'm dreaming. And then kunk, your alarm goes off. And you're like, damn it, I have to go to work again. 
that's just that's just a a dick move from your brain. Like that's that's just not cool brain. Why why are you gonna do this? I mean, technically, it is your subconscious preparing yourself for work. I guess you know the possible scenarios that you might run into. It wants to have some sort of preemptive gap, you know, to fill. It's still not fun though. I am the universe peopling and fating. Yeah, there we go. We live in a peopling universe. Me and Kira had a chat last night and she mentioned something that like instantly brought this feeling up inside of myself again. She said she feels like she's on edge, you know, and I, like I've, I've been feeling the same way as well. Like there's this, this edginess, you know, to what it is we're experiencing and what we're going through as a society and a, a collective consciousness. And then I mentioned to her as well, like if you think about the amount of dead inert matter in our universe, the amount of lesser animals when it comes to their conscious range, if you will, we as consciousness, as human consciousness, are right at the tip of it, right at the edge of this consciousness, pushing into this dead and possibly dead and nerd universe. <sighs> we are on edge, my friends, but that's the point, I guess. <laughs> I've done this my whole life. For most things, I create usernames. Never really liked having to come up with a different name for myself. When I like the one, I already have just fine. You've mentioned that before as well, Edmund, and it makes me really happy, actually. Because it's this complete acceptance. Like, you don't have to try and create for yourself a name that isn't you. You don't have a, a, a want or a will to escape that which is you. You just kind of... Is that you, Edmund? That's beautiful. You call me or, or irony is fine. Yeah, uh, irony is fine. Irony it will be, my friend. Thank you. Lol, like, damn. Now to spend eight hours at the place my brain hung out last night. Oh, right, Jovan. It's like, I understand, brain. You know, you're trying to prepare. You're trying to subconsciously go through scenarios. But, dude, can you just, like, not just for, like, a bit? Give me some sleep. How close is your nearest neighbor? Mine is 25 feet. 25 feet? That's not too far away. My nearest neighbor is about two kilometers away, I think. Like almost three miles. Mm, no, almost 1.6 miles. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how close, I've already done, you have a badass name, Edmund. It is the perfect username and uniquely yours. And it's fun to say. And it has an E as the start. Like, I want to name my son Elkin. Also, you know, starting with an E. I, I, I grew up with a name starting with an E. Edmund. Edmund. It's a beautiful name. I'm wondering, you know, like, and I was questioning this as well, thinking about the names that I want to give my kids. I want to call my two children, <laughs> I almost said Edmund for a second, Elkin and Vigorous. And I wonder how that type of stuff, you know, affects the person, how my name affected me. Is it something I have to worry that much about? Is it like, if anything, a small influencer of how you're going to turn out i'm curious what do you friends think do you think you're in the way you are potentially because of your name do your family members sometimes actively listen in on your streams i like to think they have actually liked to listen to you sometimes but don't want to admit it to you i was actually like if i'm every single time you do that toasty where you say something that i was thinking slash feeling of inside of myself but didn't verbalize because i felt it wasn't necessary it wasn't worthy of being said then you're like hey what was this thing you were gonna say <laughs> like the way that vessel was standing there he definitely listens to me and he might not be listening to me intentionally but it's like looking at text and not reading it like you can't look at text without reading it you can but you can continue to do that. Eventually, your brain is going to be like, okay, I'm bored. Let me see what it means now or something. So maybe that's what's happening. Like he's listening to it, but not because he necessarily wants to listen to it, but 
in looking at the text, in listening to it, he still maybe might find the meaning within it. And that is all I can hope for, Toasty. Hopefully that happens, my friend. No, we don't burn them, though there is a different festival of burning sculptures too, but it's of different gods. India is a place of lots of festivals. There are, they are immersed into the big water bodies, like seas or rivers. And yes, oh, they're immersed. They're, they, get, they get drowned, basically. And yes, it creates a major issue of water pollution too. I was about to say, yeah. Unfortunately, the holy rivers, if you will, in India can be extremely polluted because so many people are washing themselves in it, uh, putting dead animals in it sometimes, dead cattle, you know, their deceased ashes. It, uh, it's sometimes brutal. And it's, it's very weird of a contrast as well, because on the one hand, the reason they're doing all of these things is because they believe <clears throat> this river is sacred, it has these magical properties, and that's why they are doing all of these things. But then, because they do all of these things, they diminish, in my opinion, the sacred, right? Like having these dead things in the water or all of these detergents or plastics or stuff would in turn take away some of that sacred nature. Maybe it takes away, if anything, water purity and clarity. Maybe it doesn't take away the sacredness that the person holds in their mind when they look at that river still. I just pictured Estienne's father sneaking a phone into a dark room to watch all of his dreams. Oh no. That's a beautiful way of thinking, but that is definitely not happening. My dad actively avoids listening to this as well. Like, as well. Like, he... You won't see him close to the streams if I'm streaming. It's interesting. Mm, my ex listens in sometimes, and he was like, Will Estian talk to me? If I said no, he won't, lol, I'm the worst. No, of course I will talk to him. Like, there is absolutely no judgment, Katie. Now, your boyfriend wasn't hateful towards you, wasn't hurtful towards you. You just grew apart and didn't have the same love languages, right? So there's this like if if you if he you know was abusive towards you and made your life a living hell, then it would be harder for me to still accept the love, even though I probably will, because I I won't carry that as a bias with it. But if I had that bias with it, it'd be harder to do so. Tell him I love him nonetheless, Katie. Uh, you just need time to heal. That's true. I see a hand creeping around the door frame. My girls will walk by and Estion will read one of my comments and say my name. Mommy, he knows your name. What is this sorcery? Yes, yeah, this random person, you know, projecting your name into South Africa. What? <laughs> I said he's not allowed. Oh, shame. Oh, this time heals the wounds. It will. My kids know Melt as well, and I always comment on his shirt. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm happy that they appreciate it as well. Like the the shirts are going to be with us for a while. I'm I'm pretty sure. Like we're probably going to be wearing these shirts for the next four years or something. I tend to wear my clothes until it's literally destroyed. It doesn't like want to stay on me anymore. And my mom is like, "Can I please buy you new clothing?" I'm like, "Is clothing still clothes?" This is <laughs> no, <laughs> no clothing. <laughs> my grandmother and like when I started streaming, my mom was like, "No." You cannot continue to show up in the same three shirts if you're going to be streaming. People are going to see you, she says to me. I'm like, yeah, you're, I guess you're right. And then my mom helped me get these shirts. So every single time you love the shirts, you're sending love towards her as well. My grandma caught me trying to reschedule and went on, whoa, 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 and went off on me over it, said I'm babying him instead of trying to save myself the headache, said if he doesn't wake up, or won't take up take us she will yeah there we go i mean there's there's no dilemma if you just take a step back scarmelia i know you know as well do you write books music film or what's your favorite personal way of creating content this is definitely my personal favorite way of creating content i am writing a book but it is the most difficult way for me to create content because I have a kind of 
a nasty self-critic with myself as well. It has, you know, the biggest of bats. And just like all of the sensitive points I have inside of my psyche, it's like, you suck! <laughs> I'm like, oh, please. I don't suck. I'm trying my best. No, you suck. <laughs> but I try. I try, Irony. We will continue to try, my friend. Music, I've also made some music. I haven't made films just yet, but it is something I really want to make. There's this one filmmaker, actually a few filmmakers. Churdleys, Trevor Scott, Fairbairn Films, Joe Haver. Yeah, those dudes. They, they make some, it's like these comedy sketches. And it just looks like so much fun. It just looks like a, an absolute riot. I saw one today as well, where a person gets out of their car walking to the grocery store locks it and then a person with grocery bags come out of the grocery store and then locks their car as well that makes the sound and the person's like you're coming out of the store why are you locking your car and he locks the car again <laughs> and then suddenly there's music and everybody is just vibing to the music while they're locking their cars and it's so absurd and yet it makes me so happy and i would want to do something like that as well so we're going to make films as well irony we're gonna do it all my friend this is just the inoculation period if you will just growing grandma to the rescue i'm happy grandma rescues as well i am in complete agreement with grandma i'm happy that grandma is also an old spirit like myself doesn't want to take any of the shit anymore your grandma seems to be in the right mindset listen to her absolutely i'm sorry that you guys started out so hectic Whew, breathe through it, Scar. I'm thankful your grandma is there to support you, even if she gets spicy about it sometimes. It makes me happy as well. Having someone like that can be, you know, life-changing as well. Just having a little bit more pressure, even. Especially if it's from a positive place, from a place of love. As much as her message to you might sting about the babying part, her intention is good. Lean on her to get things done today. No, she is doing it out of love. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much for sharing this as well. I'm pretty sure you, uh, like, this is the Kiki. Yeah, there's the tail. Yeah, Kiki, her lovin's tough love. It was beautiful to see her as well. <laughs> She's so dirty. <laughs> yeah, like, I was, I was, you know... You probably saw, I was intentionally only giving her ear scratches because I knew if I was going to give her body scratches, it was going to be even worse. And then even with the ear scratches, like the, the dust, it does this thing where it feels like someone just plugs my nose. Like my, my nose is like, nope. And it just, it's just me talking about it as well. It's like, nope, none of that. Stop breathing what you're breathing. And that's where my, you're so dirty. Uh, instant this recognition comes from. Maybe not today, but most days. Much gang, me much, much, much gang. I love you all, friends. You too. Say, bro, what's the new Guardians of the Galaxy coming out? <laughs> puzzle headed. Oh, we have another puzzle headed. Not the same puzzle headed. This is puzzle headed gas. Um. Thank you. I actually can't say. Like we don't get the Chris Pratt reference a lot. But I feel Chris Pratt, at least in my opinion, I don't want to say this. I feel it's a judgment. I like Chris Pratt more than I like Chris Hemsworth. But that's probably because I was watching Parks and Recreation. Yeah, his character there was just, you know, so lovable. <laughs> so that's how I see Star-Lord now as well. Oh, the flip-flops. <laughs> Excuse me, have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Lysel, <laughs> LSD? Uh, well, yes, I have! <laughs> no, you. Lately, I feel like almost definitely due to the stress of the past couple of months, I'm not capable of the deep and meaningful thinking I usually am. Like, I've been falling so close off spirit. I've been feeling so close off spiritually and creatively beyond surface thoughts and feeling. Me too, Edmund. Me too, man. I feel it can be something that can be intimidating or concerning, but I think a better way to look at it is just, you know, in fluctuation as well. Because if you get too attached to it, you're like, why is this the way that it is? Oh, why am I not the way that I should be or the way that I was? Then you're so invested, so 
in that energy that it takes you longer to get back to where you wanted to be. So we're here with you, Edwin. We're still showing up. I think that's the most important thing. Showing up for ourselves, still pushing forward into spirituality, even though we, may, we might not be experiencing the creativity that we usually did within that spirituality. Oh, we have Aaron here as well. Hey, Melt. Man, really been going through it lately. We're here with you, Aaron. You want to tell us about it? What have you been going through, man? Lost two people in my life, Gabriel and Kathleen. Are those friends of yours? Aaron, how did they pass away, my friend? I'm so sorry to hear that. Whew. Cats are pretty woke too. They are, Mariah. They are, but they're not as stupid sometimes. You know, there is a certain quality of stupidity with dogs that can be beautiful as well. You know, just looking at them, for instance, Kiki, you know, on her back, laying in the middle of the grass, just playing with her rope, you know, and that's like her entire existence is like, oh, here I am. I have the rope in my face. That's like how I imagine her ex experiencing her life. Like there's no, oh, what am I going to eat later? Oh, I wonder, you know, how politics are. Oh, no, none of that. It's just, oh, here I am. Oh, lovey. Oh, yuppie. <laughs> and it's beautiful to watch where cats are more like, yeah, here I am. <laughs> yep, I'm still here. And then sometimes they all like, play with toys. But it's more, you know, murder instinct. I mean, like, Kiki is also 100% there for murder instinct, but I am more in line with the, the dog the dog energy than I am with the cat energy. I love my cat. I love Ginger. But also, I'm more allergic to cats than I am to dogs, unfortunately. Edmund, so that's probably one of my biases. Edmund, we're doing it right now. You just need the space for it. Thank you for saying the same, my friend. We are, Katie. We're actively doing that. We don't have to have all of it to have some of it. I think maybe that's another way to say it. Keep talking and let all of your thoughts out. Just trying to keep my heart wide, 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 open wide, wide, wide. I'm so happy that you're here as well, Erin. I think it's probably now a week ago. I was talking about you as well and the fact that you were bringing the five invita invitations to me during such a appropriate time. Like you haven't been here in a while. But in the meantime, grandma has passed away as well, unfortunately. So I've lost both grandma and grandpa on my, my dad's side this year. And as I said on that stream as well, it's this weird feeling of feeling it came at a time in my life where I was prepared for it for the first time. Like I never experienced death like that. I've never experienced death in the family. And then experiencing so much of it, experiencing the loss of two pups, experiencing not directly, but with a friend, the loss of his mother, the loss of my grandpa and my grandma, and the loss of another friend's dad very recently as well. There's been so much losses of late. And now with you as well, Aaron, I'm so sorry to hear that, my friend. As frustrating as this can be, know that this will pass like bad storms. Your awareness is already a success, Edmund. There is no failure. Even even if you plant a garden, let everything sprout and forget to water them and have everything die, that is still an experience. You are still the awareness within that, being able to witness your potential fuck up, right? It still is. You have created it, and it is good. You are, and it is good, my friend. You got this, Edmund. We're here with you, my friend. Okay, lovely people, time for me to take off now. You all have a wonderful day. And you, thank you, Vincent. I think that the light might be love, that it might be conscious, and consciousness might be a loving awareness. Mm. So, light might be the love. So, love and light can be seen as this cohesive thing. And then from this love and light, emerges or uh, yeah, is present within a conscious and then consciousness is the loving awareness emitted from that at least that's the way i'm interpreting your message irony take back i'm not capable 
don't make that statement defined. I've gone through stumps like this. There you go. Like you have so much support, Edmund. I, I like just think about that, my dude. Feeling this way and feeling stuck, feeling like you are lost in that way, and being able to know and see so many people come up for you, you know, like reach out to you, giving you information like this. What a blessing, dude, having such a support system. I've been feeling a bit better now, and my fever went down a lot. Thank you for the love and the support. Thank you, Vincent, for accepting it, my friend. Bye. Have a great day, friend. Your beauty pulled me in. Your words made me stay. Thank you, Irony. That is that is lovely, my friend. It like That, to me, is more of a compliment than anything. Genuinely, thank you so much. Thanks, Katie, Yader, and Candace. Part of me knows it's because I've been so stressed and distracted and should, and it should pass soon. But part of me doesn't want to just wait and hope for it to pass, you know. It's the, the feeling of, is this the new reality? And, like, Edmund, I'm going to suggest something to you that you're, you're probably going to resonate with as well. You've experienced states of mind that could be potentially intimidating and feeling like living in that state of mind this fear arises from is this the new reality right is this the new normal is this what it's going to be like now and i think that can be the most devastating thing in feeling that way is you're like is this just how i'm going to be forever now am i just now stuck is there no more growth happening and you hope it will pass in a way that you're like I want it to pass. And it becomes this, again, this thing you're setting there. So I'm the reason I'm upset is because I'm here. And as soon as I get there, then I'm going to be happy again. Where maybe here and feeling, oh man, uh, maybe that's where I'm supposed to be right now. Instead of wanting to get there. Maybe there is some sort of satisfaction pride happiness being pulled from the ability to be completely present with our lows if you will is someone being swooned <laughs> these are the swoon words <laughs> the swooning is happening <laughs> that's what i told him to death about the streams also infamous one you've been such a blessed co-creator ever since it's okay, we all think he's beautiful. <laughs> Infinity stones. Nice, Edmund. It's beautiful inside. It's yes, outside. You friends are really gassing me up now. Uh, puzzle headed gas. You're awesome as well, my friend. Thank you. You can try to accept things just the way they are. I know it sounds counterproductive, but you might find. When you surrender to it, the resistance will fade away. Yeah, are bringing the exact same point I did as well. It's, yeah, I mean, it's synchronicity. It's, it's no longer something that confuses or surprises me. It's just like, of course. Of course, we are aligned. I have you in my thoughts and sending you love so often. That is why you are the Star Lord. <laughs> Only get them when I don't smoke before bed. Yeah, they aren't like night terrors. I went through a night terror stage before I became a stoner. Just more benefits to my medicine. I agree completely. So that's the thing as well, Edmund. Ugh, Edmund, Toasty. I've experienced night terrors as well. So night terrors in comparison to nightmares. Nightmares are like these, you know, kids. It's like these small little chills. Where a night terror is like this adult with a, a nail studded bat looming over your bed. <laughs> and just scream yeah you know that <laughs> i'm sorry to bring up these freaking old ass memes but that's the first thing that popped into my mind have you seen uh how to discipline your child and like number six is pink guy and the face the child makes as soon as he sees the pink or the green guy it might have been is like absolute sheer confused doesn't know what the hell's going on terror and that my terrors can do that for you like <laughs> <laughs> so the nightmares are you know welcome hello nightmares please sit please have cookies and <laughs> no 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 nails that bats please do you mean uh things physically like what's causing the stress or do you mean accept the men the current mental state i think it's the acceptance of the current mental state to not 
feel like there is a need to escape from it, but to be completely present within it, to surrender to it, if you will. I think that's what Yeder is saying. At least that's what I was trying to say. I've spent all the time trying to type the right thing. I wish I had words of comfort, but I'm sitting here with you, Aaron. That's all we can do at the moment. Thank you, Jovan. Is we can be here with one another. We can know that Aaron is going through pain and we can intentionally send him our thoughts. You know, there's this theory that as soon as you think about someone, even after they've passed, you're basically animating a version of them inside of your mind. And in thinking about Aaron in a, in a tender and a compassionate way, in a way that you would imagine him recovering and experiencing love regardless of this, you're animating that version potentially of him inside of your mind. And that mind, no proof obviously, can be contained of inside of the all mind which Aaron is contained of as well. So within this all mind, instead of it just being Aaron experiencing dread in his experience, there are these multiple other entities also a part of this all mind experiencing a potential healing, a potential growth for Aaron. And it being a part of the all mind, Aaron might be able to gain from that as well. Obviously that is just, again, hippie babble. I'll just give myself a sticker disclaimer. I don't know, but it's it's something that resonates more than not. Can you hear those pigs? Making some fungus sounds. <clears throat> oh, no, no, no. I missed barely having neighbors. Growing up in the country was the best. I wouldn't trade it for anything. You could go back a little bit, Katie. Are your parents still on the countryside? Mm, are these the musician friends? I feel like I remember those names. I'm so sorry to hear this, Erin. I know how hard this must be, sending you love. Thank you, Edmund, for doing the same, friend. I'm pretty sure the next door neighbor is a serial killer. Pretty sure? You should freaking call the police if you're pretty sure about it, my friend. Uh, how are you doing today? Not doing that stoned, forgetting stuff today. I'm doing well, my friend. You know, forgetting something isn't necessarily a function of just getting stoned. Sure, you can forget things when you're stoned, but you forget things just as much if you're not stoned, you know? And after I've passed, after this physical body ceases to be, how, many, how much do you think is going to be remembered of what I've experienced of my life? Then extrapolate a thousand years, 10,000 years, a million years. A billion years. Remembrance in that way, in the small way, like trying to complete a sentence, isn't going to hurt on that global scale. All that I can do is bring love into that global scale, permanently, permanently ceaselessly creating from a place of love. If I forget or not <clears throat> to say a thing instead of another thing, I'm still going to say the thing instead of another thing out of a place of love. Malden. Mal Malden, thank you for joining us nonetheless, my friend. I give you permission to name your child after me. <laughs> Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Uh, I like the Mund in Edmund. My late grandpa was a very wise, intelligent person. It's called... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, was it... Okay, it was called Raymond. Hmm. Mund. What does Mund mean? Does Mund mean something? Man, those pigs are making some crazy sounds. Uh, I think, I like to think, man, I'm sorry, Dan, that was very inappropriate, dude. Like, you're mentioning your grandpa, Raymond, and I'm like, being distracted by the sounds. I believe just because and as a result of you knowing that your grandpa was wise and intelligent as a person, you are as well, Dan. Because you would not be able to recognize his intelligence or his wisdom if you did not in some way contain it inside of yourself as well. I like to think that my name absolutely had a part of defining who I am. My name carries certain feelings inside and I sort of project those feelings in my personality. 
I think it has that capacity. It has like this extra dimensionality to it almost. Except that the stress won't go away. Except that your frustrations of not being able to think deeply will not go away. Accept them for what they are in their current state. Accepting them is no longer resisting them. You totally derailed the train yesterday. Forgot all your shit yesterday. Yeah, I did, friend. Today, like yesterday was pretty hectic. And I set an intention yesterday on my joint for clarity, interestingly enough. And even though I was asking for clarity, I received the opposite. And then that, that feeling, that experience of receiving the opposite of what I'm trying to put forward, what I'm trying to expect, gave me clarity. And that process can be a little bit looping and getting caught in that loop while trying to also stream and, you know, keep 10 different conversations going can be difficult, Maldron. You should try it sometime, my friend. It is a lot of fun. It can be some mental gymnastics. Funnily enough, my parents never let me watch the show. God, that... It's not necessarily a show that would have, you know, made you big brain. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. My parents also didn't let me watch Ed and Eddie. I wasn't allowed to watch Cartoon Network at all. And we never had cable television either. We did get Wi-Fi when I was... Six, though. Seven. Seven or eight, we had Wi-Fi. So I've had access to the internet for a lot longer than I've had access to television. I have been feeling a powerful presence in my person, an undescribable connection. I'm very frustrated by this. I just don't know what to do with it. Anyone have an experience of something like that? An undescribable connection. And I'm very frustrated by this. I just don't know what to do with it. Anyone have an experience of something like this? If anything, be with it, Mariah. That's the only thing you can do. If you have that powerful presence within your person, you have to be with it because that is what you are. I think we all have an experience with that to an extent. But it's not something... Well, it's also not something I can say. There's not too much frustration around that. There is some. I'm not saying that you don't take action to change them, but accepting them for what they are might be the catalyst you need for the action. And spending some time in that feeling might be necessary as well, just for you to be able to truly appreciate the other side of it again. That's what I also believe. I'm honored to share this moon sound of your grandpa. That's beautiful. No jokes. My neighbor has been in jail, an absolute bastard, angry and vindictive. Oh, goodness. That's horrible. I'm sorry to hear that. You better, when you fucked up but can't remember, your shit rolling a big doobie. Thank you, friend. I appreciate you appreciating the streams as well. Mm, that's so interesting. No one ever knew my name, or they couldn't say it right. Parallel to that, I've always struggled to analyze myself. Hmm. So Edmund having security within the name he got, if you will, kind of built personality traits around the fact, and Jovan not having that security also in the same time had a hard time analyzing herself. Hmm. So maybe there's more value potentially in accepting your own name and not only accepting it but claiming it maybe would be the right word like you know really like taking a hold of it as much as it is about the sound like you could have two people being called the same name their entire lives and the one resents being called that name and the other loves being called that name and as a result of that they turn out differently even above just the sound the name makes. Your hair looks snatched for the gods of Vatican. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment, Electra Storm, but I'm so happy that you're here, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Edmund. He was a great dude, strong and wise. The day he graduated high school in 1942 was the day he received his draft notice for the U.S. Army. Hard to imagine. That's nice. Oh, yes, I'm finished of high school. I get to maybe have a gap year, maybe go to college, maybe experience what it's like to 
live as a youth outside of a home. Da -da 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 -da. You're gonna get to do all of that, but you're gonna do it while fighting for your life. Have fun, <laughs> dude. I'm so sorry to hear that, man. Oh, getting drafted. That's some bullshit. Just like, oh yeah, you know, against your will. You're gonna do this thing now. And if you don't want to do this thing, we can arrest you and put you in jail. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. I get what you're saying. Rather than working towards the goal of changing these things... Do the work regardless, and they will change naturally. Yes, there you go, Edmund. Made roll a doobie, so we can't watch you melt, please. I'm okay for now, Malden. There's no doobies going to be rolled in today's stream. Maybe tomorrow, maybe day after tomorrow again. Where is the accent from? South Africa. And hi to you, Yeet. It's nice to have you as well, my friend. South Africa is right indeed, my friend. If you focus the energy on changing them... It takes away from the energy that you could be using on the action that will bring the change you desire. Perfectly put. You have even... Th have you ever thought about being a politician? Because you can a waffle mate perfect. I don't know what that means either. Waffle mate? Waffle mate sounds like a very convenient prepackaged waffle mix. Yes, that is that is what we want in our political... <laughs> leaders. They need to be able to make perfect waffle mate. It doesn't take a lot. You're just supposed to add the dry ingredients and then add some water to it, but freaking <laughs> politics are a lot easier than that, so if you can't do the waffle... <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, where is the accent from? I've shared with you, my friend. It is from South Africa. Lim. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, people have more often than not struggled with the name as well. Although, although, I'm not sure why. Did you like your name growing up or did you resent it? Ooh! There we go, Edmund asking the same question that I was asking. I'm also curious, actually, Jovan. I loved having a unique name that nobody else ever had. It gave me a level of confidence. I suppose part of why I connected with it so much could also be because it's a family name. This is what Edna is saying. Wow. Oh, okay, this is something Dan said. Um, wow, that's so hard to wrap my head around. I couldn't imagine having been drafted the day I graduated. Dude, that's such a yikes. That's like one of the biggest yikes. Just imagine. Like, imagine what you went through graduating high school and the freedom you got to experience living outside of your parents' home for the first time. Not having that and just, like, going straight into the draft. Oh, that's... Oh, oh. I feel this guy like... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I feel like this guy is a psychopath. Yo, a sociopath is the word you use, sorry. Hmm, let me sit with that a bit. Am I a sociopath? Interestingly enough, at one point in my life, I also thought I was a sociopath. And I, I brought it up with my psychiatrist as well, or psychologist, either one of them. And like he gave me a, a, an explanation as to why I'm not a sociopath. And I was like, okay. And more recently, something that Toasty brought up as well that I realized is that I might be slightly autistic, if anything. Maybe not sociopathic, but maybe just mildly autistic. And that's okay. That's completely okay as well. I loved having a unique... Okay, I've already done, sorry. Quite the opposite. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm happy you're sending love as well, Katie, nonetheless. Uh, did they struggle with the Mund part? I really... I never really had a connection or aversion to it. This is Giovanna saying about her name. But I always completely melt when being called nicknames. Especially when I haven't asked for it to be a nickname. I don't know why. Okay. So if I call, if I say like Joe, I, I kind of like the name Jovan as well. It is a beautiful name. But now I have that, I have that little voice. <laughs> like just, just say Joe. But uh, it's okay. Okay. My name is me. <laughs> I like your name. I'm biased because I feel I know you. But your name gives me strong kind of humble vibes. Me too, Jovan. It's such a 
It's a soft name as well, Jovan. The van kind of makes me think of like a a catching, a hug almost, Jovan. It's beautiful. It really is. Like as as we say, we might be mildly biased, but bias all the way. Let's go. Then <laughs> my name is a meme. Yeah, it is. You're right, Kyle. <laughs> like the the whole energy drinks and punching holes in drywall, dude. It's exactly what I've been doing, dude. This guy seems just as crazy as a priest in a cult. Lim, priest in a cult, deify either themselves or something else, and then creates themselves as the mediary between that which they deify, be it themselves or something else. I, one, don't think I'm anything more special than you are, and that's why I still choose to read your messages and co-create with you. Two, I believe that if someone tells you you need them for enlightenment, for spiritual progress, for whatever, then run the fuck away. And three, I believe that we're all just equal human beings, dude. Like, there's nothing more special about me compared to any other person. Another person has that infinitude captured with inside of them as well. And being able to recognize that and communicate with that is what I'm all about, my friend. Trying to deify myself, you know, in a, a crazy priest and a cult, if you will. Oh, hell no. I don't have time for that. <laughs> Cause they're priests, damn, they got organized. I mean, like you have actually certain cults that do like tax exempt cults, where they they created a religion for tax exemption, which is another loophole to it as well. To be honest with you, uh, to be honest with you, I like Estian. I'm feeling it too, my friend. I say these things to you, but they are just as much for me. It's something that's present, but it isn't the presence. Again, that thing that is present, you're aware of it because you have the awareness to be aware of it. And sometimes we get so caught in that thing, you know, the feeling of not being as creative, not being as spiritual, if you will, not thinking as deeply about things. It's this oh, I'm aware of these things and then getting caught up in the awareness of the thing instead of aligning yourself again with the awareness that is intrinsic within you. Mm, you can ask a politician a simple yes or no question and they will waffle for hours without saying anything. Well, ask me a, a politician question, my friend. But I guess that is something that I am capable of doing as well. Not so much because I'm wa I'm trying to waffle, just because I'm trying to cover all the bases, you know. I'm trying to, like, this is an analogy. I don't know if I came up with it, but it makes so, so much sense in my way of thinking about things. I'm a very, very visual thinker. Like, first and foremost, things happen in my mind as explosions of color of like things flowing over one another this melty mess of inside of my mind and then i try to articulate it so if something shows up inside of my mind my way of using words is like using little strips of paper and sticking them onto an, invis an invisible three-dimensional object so my waffling is sticking different pieces of paper to try and encapsulate this thing that you've asked me instead of just putting a single piece of paper and then believing that I've described it enough. I love it, uh, team. <laughs> oh, Mel, so sorry to hear that. It is okay, Aaron. It's okay, my friend. These things happen. These things happen. And they're supposed to happen as well. They're what makes life beautiful. She was definitely suffering as well, and she wasn't the grandma that I grew up with. She had extreme Alzheimer's and I believe genuinely that her passing is a relief, you know, not only to the family from a perspective of wanting to help her and not being able to because she doesn't recognize us, but also for her on a psychological level that she doesn't have to experience living like that anymore. Mm. Uh, yes, usually the moon part, and everyone usually spelt it wrong too. And don't even get me started on my last name. That's interesting and good to know. And I've never been much for nicknames because I had such a strong connection to my name. Yeah, like Ed. I also don't just like Ed either. Edmund is, is perfect. 
right? Life doesn't slow down for everyone. No, no, it doesn't. Unfortunately, Aaron, we're just like <laughs> being dragged through infinity at you know, <laughs> insane speeds, 30 kilometers in a second. Well, I'm here with you as well. Thank you, Joe Carbuck. It's nice to have you here again, my friend. It's been forever. How long has it been? Months? It's been months, right? Life is stages, recognizing each stage and taking advantage of each stage to its fullest. Perfectly put, friend. Thank you for coming back and sharing such a divine thought with us. This just tells me that we are all in tune to each other. This I am extremely grateful for. We will grow stronger and deeper together. Fortunately, that is something we're capable of as well. And we've already seen it happening. This is just the start. Shucks, thank you. You definitely know me. And though I know your real name, Toasty, Carrie... <laughs> Toasty carries all the feelings and emotions. I get when thinking of you as a person. It's not a meme to me, brother. I think I think he was probably talking about the Kyle name. The Toasty name also actually kind of encapsulates Toasty to me. I agree completely with what you're saying. Uh, have I punched holes in drywall before? Yep, once or twice, lol. Uh, did I have a slight Mountain Dew addiction in my early 20s? Also, yep, I own it. Freaking, well, I was an actual Kyle for a bit, like, yeah, absolutely. Is this shirt Robert Graham? Yes, I wear only the most luxury, luxurious of Robert Graham shirts. Mm, no, my friend, it's just a... Uh, like a super mole or a strip mole shirt, I guess. I was digging through brain to find an Edmund nickname. Can't Edmund is too strong. Yeah, like Ed would be the nickname, right? I just like just Ed if you're really lazy. I think heaven and hell are states of mind. As soon as you become at peace with your current moment, you become free from your own damaging state of mind. Mm. Ethereum heart, it's been a while since we've seen you here as well, my friend. Thank you for sharing with us. What the fuck's going on here, lol, JK? Uh, you, you tell me, friend. If you spend enough time and you can definitively tell me if this is what's going on here, I think we're all going to give you applause, friend, because sometimes I don't even know. Yeah, I was almost at the point where I was accepting it, but in a, okay, I guess this is just uh, my being now, a hollow pseudo hippie with nothing substantial going on upstairs kind of way. I've been holding onto the negative too much. At least you're aware of that, Edmund, if anything, my friend, which means you're not just a hollow pseudo hippie, if you will. <laughs> Checkmate, we have found the fullness is inside Edmund again. Got a few scars on my name as well, but I embrace them. Absolutely. That's the way, man. I feel bad for actually chill Karens right now. Oh, yeah. Karens are definitely getting it worse than the Kyles did. Definitely toasty. Uh, I get Ed, Eddie, Ed, Edward, uh, Edardo, uh, Edmundo, and others all the time. I will respond to all of them, most likely. Edmundo. No, Edmund is Edmund is good. <laughs> freaking uh, Eduardo <laughs> is the one that heard. Yeah, freaking toasty as well. <laughs> I feel it, y'all. Feeling the good vibes, sending them out to you as well. Let us dance and celebrate being alive today. Thank you, my friend, for sharing this life with us. Said with an accent like Antonio Banderas. I don't know who that is, unfortunately. I would love to try the accent. But I don't know how to say it. Oh my goodness, those are so obvious. Brain was overcomplicating it. Edman. Just the Edman himself. Mm. Edman kind of works as well, actually. I absolutely will respond in this case. Oh, I like Edman. Yes, he does as well. I don't think I've heard that before, actually. I have, however, got him. Um, Ed likes men. Edmund? Ed likes men? Oh good old high school dude ed likes puppies yeah that one sounds better to me negativity is always stronger when it comes to me it is easy to get caught up in it i try to practice gratitude when i find myself focusing only on the negative that is the only way i found i can free myself as well if you find yourself getting completely caught in some sort of state of negativity just you know start listing the things that you have to be grateful for and it can help at least wait a white person with an indian accent what lol jk i have an indian accent 
I don't think so, exactly. More South African, but thank you for joining us, friend, for trying to interpret. It's me again, friend. Hey, Chad, Daniel. Thank you for joining us, my friend. How are you doing? This one would not have made middle school. <laughs> Frustrated. I, uh, I feel it, dude. I, I feel it, man. Like, I instantly saw it as well, Edmund. High school and middle school. <sighs> Kids can be monsters. I'm an over-apologizer in person. Turning my sorries to thank yous has been one of the ways I've been training my mind to be more positive, right? Instead of being, oh, sorry for saying this much, sorry for typing an essay, be like, oh, thank you for reading it. Thank you for spending your time to, you know, feel this message with me. It's something so small, and yet it can make the biggest of a difference. I feel that it's helped. I believe in you. I believe in you as well. <laughs> Javad, absolutely. It's so hard because I actively try to avoid embracing only negativity. But when there are so many outside sources directly pumping negativity into my everyday life, it gets overwhelming. Unfortunately, these cell phones have the capacity to do both, you know. It's definitely a dual-edged sword in that way, especially. Yes, this. I've been trying to do this. It, it makes the biggest difference, friend. I'm so happy you're doing the same. I love this. I love you. Yeah, yeah. love bombs being shared. Shine on. I will barely if you do too, my friend. This is the deal we make every single time. Hard take on taxes, bro. That's a loaded question. I believe taxes are okay. I just believe the way we're utilizing our taxes is not okay. That's my hard take, friend. That's the way I can say it. That is going to be the least spicy. <clears throat> I find avoiding something brings more of it. Embracing it tends to allow it to fade away. It's like moving through it, right? It's like moving through it. It's like finding yourself again at the center of it. And then there are these layers to reality that flows over your awareness of it. As soon as you try and avert yourself or you try to go back, then it stops. And you're like, oh, this sucks. And then as soon as you face it, you accept it, you become present within it again, then you can move through it. You can break through to the, the, the good sides of it again, if you will. The left, everyone deserves extra syrup with their waffle, mate. The right, no syrup. Be happy you got a waffle at all. Yeah. That's a good point, actually. Toasty coming in with the waffling as well. I've been lurking for the better part of the last half an hour. I'm going to go and get myself ready for my day. Thank you for sharing the space with us, Katie. Sending you so much love as well, my friend. Mm, librarians. Oh my goodness, just leave me and my waffles alone. Libertarians, sorry. Uh, what you resist persists. Oh, Yader. That's actually Yader's thing as well. What you resist persists. Oh, definitely. And I don't avoid negativity entirely, as you can't have life without it. I just try to avoid embracing only negativity in my life. And sometimes it feels like that's all there. That's all that's there to embrace, even when I know that's not true. It becomes loud, right? In our field of consciousness, right? If we have all of this potential to experience sets of infinity, the negative sets of infinity are really fucking loud. They're like, Wah! screaming at the top of their lungs, trying to get our attentions, being like, oh, look at how horrible it is. <laughs> Pay attention. It's so bad. You know, still so bad. <laughs> and love and calm and quiet is just like, Fear, anger, judgment, turmoil, <laughs> running around in your field of consciousness. Love is just like, hmm. yes. <laughs> and that's why it's easier to get, you know, attached to the fear, to get attached to the negativity. It's louder, but it isn't stronger. Mm, yes, the Carl Jung quote, I let resonate all the time. It's Carl Jung quote, thank you for letting us know as well. I'll, I'll, I'll call it the Yater quote, you know, if you don't correct me, Yater. 
<laughs> no, definitely, and I don't. Oh, I've already had one. Uh, Melt. I have that little voice in my head. Donkey. Whoa. <laughs> Loving you all, I will try and send, spend more time with you all tomorrow. It would be belovedly blessed to see you again tomorrow, Aaron. Thank you for sharing the space that you did with us, man. I hope you feel better. <sighs> I'm sending the family of your friends love and light as well. We'll talk about it a little bit more tomorrow, if you're willing to, my friend. I say, I thought I was a sociopath, but it turns out... I was just uh, the autism and the shitty childhood, but now even slightly sad movies make me cry, so I'm death okay inside. Same, Ethereum heart. Very much the same, actually. I'm happy that that is not something that I'm experiencing alone. Again, the synchronicity of life. Thank you, my friend, for being here with us, for being able to cry at the sad, you know, parts of movies as well. For being able to cry here, my friend, Ethereum. You're so loved. Looking forward, we have a bunch of little fruit flies of us again. Uh, looking forward to setting, sitting with you again tomorrow, Aaron. I've always pleasant sharing space with you. It really is. When I was on ADHD and depression meds, I basically was a sociopath. Felt no pain and had no emotions. Now I'm the same Ethereum. Even the smallest nothingness can make me cry sometimes. Sometimes you'll just find yourself getting super emotional and crying about a, a personal state of feeling like I'll, I'll feel really shitty I'll be like oh why am I feeling this way why why do I feel so unaligned why do I feel so stupid why do I feel and that's a big one for me as well is when I feel less aligned I also feel less intelligent and it can be devastating and then I'll just cry in that space I'll just be like why why but here I am you know accepting it and that cry can really help as well. I'm happy that we're we're better, my friends. And I think we can constantly grow as well. Maybe we can grow our IQs, but we can grow our EQs. Much love, indeed, Edmund. Embracing the good and the bad in the, is the way. We learn to embrace everything when we do that. Nothing can stand in our way. This is the way. That which obstructs the way becomes the way. A good old stoic saying as well. That sounds so tough. Hey, Mammy. Thank you for being here with us, my friend. It's so nice to have your expectations. Absolutely, my mind. No, bro. You cut your hair? No. Hope, no hope. It's just tied up, my friend. It's not cut. I appreciate your dramaticism, though. I mean, do I look that bad with short hair? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't, I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, I've been I've been washing my hair less as of late. So today is day five of not washing my hair. So I want to get it, you know, to like a once a week wash ratio. That means out of a month, going from last month, I'm going to wash my hair a minimum, maybe a maximum of 26 times less. 26, you know, squirts of shampoo less that I put on my hair. 26 squirts of conditioner less that I'm putting into the earth. So yeah, slowly but surely friends, we can make things better for ourselves as well. Maybe the hair will get cut, you know, out of frustration as well. I'm like, damn it hair, I have to still wash you once a week. <laughs> Hopefully not, we will we'll get there. I've actually been wanting to catch myself in a state of anger so I can sit back and analyze and get better at handling it when I get provoked. Ironically, I've been way swoony and happy lately. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yes, Jovan. Maybe your acceptance of the potential of being angry is why you're now so happy and swoony, maybe. It was one of my best decisions I've made, uh, was getting myself off of those meds. I'm so happy you did as well, Edmund. And like, I know it is hard. It's, it's hard to demonize those things. You just outright. But having experienced stuff like that, it becomes so difficult to see people doing that their entire lives and then that becoming their new reality. Instead of maybe using it as a means to push off of. I'm actually curious about you, Dan. If you're still here, my friend, how are you doing? Have you gotten off of your antidepressants or is your insurance now actually covering it? I'm really curious, my friend. You're fortunate to have the extreme contrast. You have experience. You know where the center... 
center is now. Harmony between these is your is yours, my friend. It's already there. <sighs> Just believe you are there. <laughs> I guess this is a Taurus. I imagine this a sliced apple. And then this apple had this energy flowing through it. But that's just a, a Taurus of extra steps. Mm, you definitely know Antani Antonio Banderas. He's the dad in Spy Kids. Ooh, I do not that doesn't pop into my head, but I probably do know Antonio Barandas if you if you think I do that. Probably seen him in a movie at some point. I've had plenty of angry moments lately to reflect on. I'm happy that you've been happy lately. You get to experience the anger in the divine, the, the divine mind so that we don't have to. Thank you, Edmund, for your noble sacrifice, my beloved friend. Mm, I've had oh, Dan. That's my actual mental imprint of him. <laughs> He's such an accomplished actor. And I can only think of him fighting against some people. Lol. Dude, like, that is the biggest fear. You play a role so well, and it's like a skit comedy. And you just become that. Like, calling Ryan Reynolds, you know, the Green Lantern. It would be so wrecked. <laughs> oh, goodness. It would be, oh. It's beautiful, but it would be so wrecked. Uh, I was gonna say, you are a German Chris Pratt or something. Oh, you know, Snoo? South African Chris Pratt's closer, but thank you. I've, I appreciate your love nonetheless. Uh, I can't see your other comments, but I got a notification for it. I'm happy to be so active today, too. I think we probably were raised pretty similarly. I think I am still getting most of Toasty's comments. If I'm missing some of your comments, please let me know as well. Oh, a Reddit chat comment. Haven't shown for me either. It's very frustrating because I don't want people to think I'm ignoring them. Mm, Reddit, please. <laughs> it's actually been very aware of this lately. How fortunate I am to have had all the experiences I've had in my life. In so many ways, I've seen both sides of so many spectrums. When no, When not many others can say that, right? And I think because of those spectrums as well, it becomes even easier to almost want to hide from them or forget about them again. I don't know if this is resonating a bit, Edmund, but we have this intensity to <sighs> contrast, right? Like, we're not, really, I want the contrast. So we forget things and then we experience them again. Like, I'm thinking about, you know, tea breaks right now. Uh, taking a tolerance break. I actually thought for the longest time it's called a THC break, which I guess it could be as well. Can create, in turn, when you do smoke again, more significant of an experience. But then I was thinking to myself, what if you just like take a week off between your smoke sessions to take like a week tolerance break every single time you smoke and you try and experience that intensity every single time you smoke, but... In doing that week for week, would you then eventually not experience the intensity anymore? And then you would switch to doing something differently. And then you would switch to a tolerance break again. And it's this constant flux almost. Even though you've experienced these spectrums, you still find yourself in flux between them. And it can be beautiful. And all you need to do is be present with it. But it can also be intimidating or frustrating sometimes. What do you do when you're angry? Being outside changes my mood immediately. All things in moderation, including moderation. Yeah, that's a good one, Mariah. When I get angry, I just start breathing. I clench my fists and I breathe. And then I imagine releasing the anger. And I clench my fists and I breathe and I imagine releasing the anger. And then eventually it just kind of subsides and I ask myself, why exactly are you feeling this way? Is it something that serves you? And then the decision gets made. Oh no, Ozzy is after chasing wood mouse into our garden. Must rescue the mouse, be right back. <laughs> Mammy being the most soft-hearted person in the world. He goes and saves a mouse. The, yes, this has been happening more frequently lately, actually. To all the people, Mammy and I are not ignoring you. We love you. We love you as well, Edmund. Maybe, if anything, I can read their messages. I go outside, always says my mindset. 
Yeah, going outside. I just uh, go and sit under a tree. It makes me feel like the Buddha and it feels silly, but it makes me feel better. You are the Buddha, Ethereum heart. That is the truth you're underlying it, my friend. <laughs> Very much so, most people don't experience the contrast. The contrast is an amazing catalyst for growth and change. It is, indeed. I went six months without shampoo and conditioner, still rinsed with water daily. My hair felt so amazing after a couple of months. We are destroying our hair with shampoo. Yeah, dream, I agree, dude. My hair is feeling really good, you know, since I've been washing it, like, uh, moving into washing it once a, a week now. Like, yesterday was day four, and I could still wear my hair loose without it bothering me. And my hair has been feeling better and better, not using any products on it. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I don't want to destroy my hair or the planet, you know, continuously. Utter rubbish. Utter uttish. Blubber radish. <laughs> I love you, friends, so much. Thank you. Like, just something like that. You know, that's literally just love. It's like, love isn't true. And then you friends are doing the same thing. But you're doing it in a way that love is true. And I'm like, yep, yep, yep. I'm going to choose one or the other. I know which one I'm going to choose. Uh, not to say I rely on it, but I couldn't have gotten off of my meds without cannabis. Shout out to one of the most incredible plants out here for helping save me mentally. Unfortunately, and I say unfortunately in the same way that you're saying, uh, I, I, not to say I rely on it. I agree with the same way, dude. Like, cannabis definitely was a massive help with getting off of antidepressants for me as well. And if you have to choose one or the other, I'm going to choose cannabis 20 times out of 10. That's not how math works, Estian. I know. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I've been off of antidepressants for about, ooh, six to seven weeks. I was on a low dose, five milligrams, Lexapro, but I can definitely tell the difference. Unfortunately, it's been more difficult to manage stress amidst, ad, amidst this move. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that's definitely going to be a part of it. But think of the stress as just a presence, dude. Like a sheer, I'm so present that I'm stressed instead of like, oh, I'm just stressed. Maybe the, the, the antidepressant effect of it, of the stress, you know can be something that you can rely on even, you know, being aware of your stress in a way that it brings presence instead of it as a means to be something to fix, right? Like, oh, I'm stressed, I need to take antidepressants to fix the stress. Oh, I'm stressed, I must be extra present. Here's that, that way of looking at it. Mm, and I'm beyond grateful. I'm beyond grateful for you, friends. Spread the world, fuck yes, gave the feels, I'll never stop, don't my friend. The pharma industry has been guinea-pigging my mom on so many different antidepressants over the last few decades. They are ruining her life. They're ruining millions of people's lives, dream. That's the craziest part about it, my friend, is that it's, we know these things have detrimental side effects. We know, we call them selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Because they select a certain part of her, like, receptors. They, they aren't actually receptive. They're not that targeted. They just kind of, you know, blunt force trauma our brains into reuptake inhibiting. So making our brains use our own serotonin more than it's supposed to. Feeling better as a result of it, potentially. But also, as a result of that, you know, when we're not taking our SSRIs, we, we're going into a low vibe. So we're constantly relying on these antidepressants. And it is ruining a lot of people's lives, dude, you're right. I'm so sorry, that must be so hard to watch. It can be. All things considered, I think that antidepressants were a positive for me. I was depressed and struggling to start self-care routines, exercise, hygiene, nutrition, and the bump in serotonin helped me to push through it in the beginning. You see, in that way, I agree completely, Dan. If you're using, like, your antidepressant as a, as, like, a little bit of a raft, like a little lifeboat, Right. But this lifeboat has or actually like let's let's talk about it as a one of those little rings. Right. You can hook one of your arms to stay afloat a little bit. But as soon as you try and get on top of it, it's just going to sink with you as well. So it's OK to have an arm for this thing to be support, but you're still going to have to swim to an island. You can't just rely on this little flow to keep you up for the rest of your existence. And as you're saying as well, Dan, like the antidepressants helped you 
with that small initial push for you to start d doing these things, taking your exercise, your hygiene, and your nutrition into consideration. And Dan has been exercising. He's been seeing a lot of progress as well. I'm so proud of you, man. I'm so happy that you're off to antidepressants as well. It's hard to watch. I labor lots of... I harbor lots of anger, anger towards antidepressants side of the pharmaceutical industry. Me too, unfortunately, friend. Especially since we have alternatives. Like psilocybin. <laughs> but after like six months, I think it was time to start to rely solely on those self-care routines. Those are the ones that serve you more than anything. That's the thing as well, Dan. Love is true. Damn, I comment about my anger relief. Got skipped. We do the same thing, Mel. Did I skip your comment or did I not see it? Sorry, it must be hard to watch. Do, 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 do. I'm not to say I rely on it. Mm. Maybe I skipped, unfortunately. I'm sorry, Edmund. I don't know if I didn't see it or something or it was really far up. Mm. In short, I think they serve as a temporary boost for people who don't suffer from clinical depression. If you have severe clinical depression relying on SSRIs for your lifetime isn't a real solution. And we know now as well, this is now proper studies that are being done, a single psilocybin experience can have antidepressive effects for up to six months. You know, and that's the reason it's been illegal for so long, because selling a single capsule of something every six months is not nearly as profitable as selling you an antidepressant that you take every single day, right? It's very simple from a mathematical standpoint, but it's horrible that they're just thinking of it in terms of math and not of human quality of life. Oh, nobody wants to debate. They just scream about utters. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, come. Come debate me, dude. If you want something to say, if you want to tell me why I'm speaking utter garbage, if you will, speak whatever you consider to be utterly divine, and then we can both accept and, you know, bring this divine into our forefronts instead of what you consider utter garbage. But if you don't try the one, then I guess we'll have to just hold on to our garbage. Yay. <laughs> I do as well. I think we are moving towards a better future from those of us with depression. I think so as well. Slowly but surely. Right? Slowly but surely. And we're helping one another more so than ever as well. I don't want any beef. Just moving past debate. <laughs> Uh, SSRIs up my wave until the wave became a stagnant, still swamp, humid, stale, thick, thick apathy followed. Yeah, for me too, dude. There's an example. If you have a horrible injury, opioids can help you manage the pain. If you're still taking opioids five years after your injury, you have a problem. That's SSRIs in a nutshell. It is. It really is. And the, the thing with SSRIs is they're fundamentally addictive. In the same way that, you know, morphine or opioids can be, an SSRI creates um, fluctuation within inside of your mental state. So you take this thing, you have like an upping effect, and then when this thing runs its course, you have now the low effect, and then you have to take the thing again to have the upping effect. And ha having that cycle, that experience if inside of your physiology of, oh, I take thing, I feel a little bit better, that is what makes it addictive. A, a strong psych psychedelic experience can knock you on your ass so hard that you're like, oh, hell no, I don't need another one of those for the next year or two years or the rest of my life. Sometimes people go as long. But from that experience, they can gain so much insight into why it is they're experiencing pain, why it is they're suffering. And having that insight is one of the most valuable things to actually solving those problems. And just relying on SRI, again, you know, just treating the pain, like being in pain and then using this opioid, but then just leaving this wound open. Like, oh man, it really fucking hurts, but I'm not gonna clean it. I'm not gonna take care of it. I'm just gonna take this pill. But, oh, okay, I don't feel it anymore. That's not the way. We can't continue living like that. I have heard they are really helpful for some people in the short term. I'm glad they work as intended for you. That's great. I'm also so happy that Dan is better. That's definitely helped me at first, but I was on them for two years and I was just slowly becoming more and more zombified. My friends, 
I think on this note, we are going to say goodbye. We've been streaming for so long. I'm super overdue for a psychedelic experience. Uh, I haven't tripped since December 2019. Think about all the crazy shit that happened since then. Think about all of the patterns your mind has to go through to process all of them crazy shits, if you will. My friends, thank you so much for joining me. Asha, mash, mash, mash. To all of you, I love you so much. Thank you, friends, for sharing the space with me. We do this every day. I'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>